नमस्कार अलोक जी वेलकम टू कॉन्वर्सेशंस एंड थैंक यू सो मच फॉर मेकिंग टाइम सो एज विद व्हाट इज योर अर्लीस्ट मेमोरी ऑफ इधर द एक्सपीरियंस और द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ अहिंसा राइट आई was born and stayed in kanpur till 24 years of age when i went to bangalore in demands and i was living in a locality which was typical middle classes locality of uh, all indian towns and uh, that place was a sort of interface between a largely i mean i shouldn't be talking in these terms but nevertheless because the other terminology we on which we fight these days so that was a pretty educated middle class where kids were aspiring to be iitians and ias and doctors and all that but if i go back and i often recall this because it was violence all over right from homes the middle class families where you could hear and the houses were right next to next as in the middle class locality it happens no lawns you have that something called chabutra over that and the walls are there so har ghar se you could listen uh, people husband and wife and kids being thumbed and all that drama used to happen that was one level of it the second level was how people were behaving on the roads kanpur is still behaving similarly but some things have changed and you could see street fights happening between people disagreements would lead to some brick throwing and then there was another scale level of it which we saw during communal riots so the local newspaper dainik jagran which is the largest selling newspaper if you still pick it up the maximum news you will find is of somebody has killed somebody has shot somebody is doing this so that larger ethos of kanpur and it is worse in other cities in up and bihar and you know all this i don't have to reiterate so that level of violence was there in everybody what decade everybody. are you talking about what i am talking i was i was born in 64 and so say till 80s or something when hmm. we became more sensible <laughs> but <laughs> no but i personally never indulged in it but i saw the worst form it where every kid was moving with a local uh, revolver during the 92 riots and all that and i was on that fateful day i was on the highway between lucknow and kanpur so i saw it all happening there but at that time also maybe because of my predicament and because i have part influence of my maternal family alok ji this when you say 1992 you mean uh, this is the post babri, babri masjid demolition violence post, yes. okay yes i was i was in lucknow at the same time in that day and evening i had to return to kanpur and i had a small beard so my uncle insisted that you please remove this beard otherwise you don't move out of lucknow so my uncle felt that you beard looks like a muslim beard and we don't want you to get caught you better be clean shaven at least you will have some uh, safety when you are driving so trust me i entered kanpur which is eight, from 80 kilometers lucknow is 80 kilometers and as i entered kanpur i was told by a policeman not to go to the city so i told him i cannot return back because obviously there is a lot of risk so i somehow dodged him and entered the city so between the entry point of the city and my home there were about 4 kilometers and those 4 kilometers were hell i mean it was like violence had spread all over seemingly natural normal people were caught by some frenzy and you could hear bomb blast and you could hear firing and fire so anyway that bad phase passed and I, we had witnessed 84 before that that's right because in kanpur it was one of the worst riots if yeah. you remember yeah but one question which arose out of that i was in medical college at that time i had actually in 92 i had finished my diploma in psychiatry from nimans bangalore mm-hmm. so i was back home for a few months but one question which sprang up which i remember i had it even in my childhood around 17 18 there's the same people who are perpetrating violence whether at home or at a communal level or at a society level after some time they again become normal 
they start living and start sharing the same space time and food and festivals and all and then again somebody will strike them so this question i asked at my home also and i kept on asking this trust me it took me two decades to answer this question and for that i neuroscience helped me my own profession psychiatry helped me and gandhi helped me part answers i got because of my uh, the family my wife's family who were communist and uh, so when i started studying lot of stuff away from my medicine uh, actually no, i was sorry, not sorry sorry alok ji alok ji yes, i yes. complete that thought i think wo beech mein chhoot rahi hai that about yeah, your I, wife's I, family being communist i'll tell you i'll yeah, tell you my just, fa- yeah complete yeah. that please my father my father in law was the communist party general secretary of up till 89 when he died that is the time when we decided to get married but anyway i was going into the family i could see intellectuals sitting there with their uh, marxist ideas and the work which they were doing so i didn't see any violent thought in that although a lot of class struggle and everything comes up when you talk of uh, communism and but i didn't see violence i did see that there was a difference of opinion the way society was running and what they were thinking so that thought also got inducted into my baseline thought of this question that how are these same people able to do violence and live normally the next day so as i got into neuroscience and mental health and all then i and i think the biggest lesson is mahatma gandhi so i started studying mahatma gandhi in perspective of these things and apart from his other things so the, this big question took me a lot of time to actually understand that why is it that when the anger comes out so i had to expand this whole definition of violence so in my sense violence is include aggressiveness in it happens in a situation so we wouldn't call a tiger hunting a buffalo as violent obviously we don't call it by our understanding of biology and world but we call a person who goes and hit somebody so i think what we are talking about all this time needs to be expanded violence is any aggressiveness or rage or physical or verbal which decimates the other person either in the ego or physical body especially when there are other alternatives available of a peaceful negotiation so if you break that that comes out as a violence so this is what i was working on all through my uh, psychiatry and after once i started this program on gandhi i delved more deep into it then i got the answer i think i have got the answer how to turn it into action is another big question yeah so the, uh, you know what is your outlook on that basic question that is right. a human being more oriented to be violent, violent or yes. is the human being naturally non violent because yes, this dispute yes. continues even though we know that there is so much work on it to to put yes. it in a nutshell is violence a learned behavior or is non violent a learned behavior or there is a third option that both are learned behaviors Absolutely. so i would love to hear your thoughts both I, a, as a theoretical scientist and as a yeah. practitioner on the on the ground yeah i think you have hit the nail if we i think we'll have to before we talk of non violence let's take a step back and see what has happened man i am mean, i'm saying man it's not a gender word it's man as a human they were individualistic hunters to start with as the community grew so that was one type of violence but organized violence appeared in human race not many animal species are known for organized violence maybe bearing chimpanzees here and there once they take a stick and but that is for uh, capturing the female largely once the this human community grew all these things started happening organized violence one kabila against other the one community against fighting over food this that 
and as we grew till now we are still doing the same actually if you see all of us what are we doing we get up hunter gatherer violence has not diminished it has changed its rules and presentation corporations and nations doing taking the moral responsibility of correcting some civilizations george bush for example he decided to correct iraq for suddenly maybe the purpose was different but this was one part of it that is still so brain understand that as we are born our networks of neurons in our head which are 10 to the power 11 by each experience and learning and tradition and whatever goes into us they form networks and the self which we are talking about which starts uh, appearing by 17 18 and we continue by that is actually formed of what we have been taught so the problem is that what we are taught and brain has this you should also understand what is the purpose of brain why has it evolved like this human brain or any brain has one purpose is survival of the body which owns it so it has to keep anticipating the next moment it has to evaluate each thing which goes into the head on a threat scale so the deeper structures of brain will always evaluate whether this is threatful or not so if it is threatful everybody will behave in the same way once the threat is gone then you can do mathematics and art and discussions and all that right so if there is a fire somewhere in the between even if there is a illusory fire somebody hacks and puts between you and me in this cyber space our first reaction will be either to retract or do something about it and if we feel though this is all a illusion then we can talk so primary emotion has rage inbuilt in it over millions of years the way it has evolved but what has also happened rajni is this is not the whole truth the answer which i have discovered that along with this violent uh, reaction of the brain which is natural which is natural there is also a part of the brain called mirror neurons which have provided us an opportunity to develop empathy and along with empathy came altruism sacrifice living together giving in so both these streams were developing together but most people if you bring them to the question of violence and non violence non violence is a abstract concept which includes lot of this stuff so people can be naturally altruistic they can be naturally but if you ask them whether you are non violent and all it becomes an exercise so you don't have to train people in violence but you have to train people in non violence no but i want to just pause uh, here to ask yeah. uh, you know there yes. is also evidence uh, particularly one book that i have seen written by an american uh, army person a colonel in yeah. the american army who yeah. documents how difficult it is actually to teach men to kill yeah so, so but there again is, i said can you elaborate a little bit on that yeah. so if we then we have to again that's what i am saying we have to expand this whole concept of violence violence is a multi layered stuff if you are talking about a individual rage reaction everybody has a potential of doing it everybody has a potential of killing in face of threat right right everybody will fight for the family do all that stuff as you move on come to community level so that whole uh, tribal mentality comes in and that that pervades right from academics to army once you go to national national level so even nations and war and army and all there the whole game changes actually because there is no reason to kill what you are saying there is no, there's reason no to personal kill. reason to kill there is no personal reason to kill even the leaders who provoke war they also don't have a personal reason but then the game also changes because we should also remember that what is mind also doing of anybody is all the time it is categorizing because brain need brain doesn't want ambiguity and uncertainty Really? Brain needs to have yes, yes. 
that's why people can't handle too much information if it is given too fast it provokes anxiety it no provokes... but uh, sorry go ahead you you complete the thought then i'll ask no. you a question so what, what what i'm saying brain has a certain way of working whatever information goes to brain right throughout our life brain by experience has to keep categorizing that's why any new thing which goes into our head has to be compared with past memory whether you already know it or not so all the time brain is trying to make things certain and less ambiguous okay but then yes. how do we explain the ways in which our civilizational ethos evolved on this subcontinent because yes. if there is one thing i think on which there can be no dispute it is that yes. the entire civilizational uh, heritage of whether mm. it is 3000 years or 5000 years mm. is that it has thrived on dealing with ambiguity and on holding seemingly on the contra- yeah contradictory. holding seemingly contradictory things uh yes. to be you know simultaneously true yes. and then therefore sought higher and higher and more abstract levels of truth so can Absolutely. you uh, yeah, throw I, I, some I, I, light I, I, on how this would have happened no so this happened because of the cognitive training In, re- remember all through all through if you even if you go back to vedas and upanishads and buddha and the last of the tradition was mahatma gandhi i will take krishna also into that not the mythological krishna whoever whether krishna was there or not is not the question whoever created or krishna lived with that philosophy they take all that into one line see what was happening india was never seeking happiness trust me even when they were talking of immortality even when they were talking so what they were teaching was how to tolerate dukha in a stoic manner or how to process dukha how to process dukha how to let go right whether you were letting go in a sacrifice in vedas or whether you were discovering death in upanishads or when buddha was saying sabbam anittam sabbam anischam sabbam dukham he was asking us to detach and observe right what krishna was doing he was saying you hit the ball which comes to you don't bother about the next ball correct so this is a movement where you have to do you are saying that is that is the essence of what he is saying to arjun essence of it to arjun so and gandhi gandhi knew that this process of knowledge of non violence of connecting everybody like you have written in your civilizational gandhi connecting everybody would require giving part of myself sacrificing part of myself right so the whole movement from self to being an absolute no self it may sound spiritual but trust me it is not that spiritual which we talk about today but it is not mysterious it requires some so what they were saying that as you keep dropping parts of self you are inducting more and more people yes right this yes. was the training which survived india all the time yes so we have to go back to the definition of secular which buddha and gandhi were using for Can them say secular... more about that please say more about that yeah so the secular for buddha also and gandhi also meant that i respect your difference i respect the diversity not tolerate please I and mean, there is a huge difference between these two words you understand that That's most right. of us know it when i say i will tolerate i am already putting myself on the pedestal and say you are nothing so i will tolerate while you respect you say okay i am giving part of myself you give part of yourself and let us come to middle ground that was the real philosophy of this country given that and they knew they were great cognitive psychologists without naming psychology that brain will categorize brain will always try to look into the gaps these gaps are where violence arises what can be and what is say the more gaps, about the gaps please explain yeah. the gaps a little more so so imagine go to over some some school for example 
somebody a kid a 3 year old kid see how he start from class 0 to 12 you have to top you have to win the race you have to do this don't give notes do this do that me my 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 all that went goes on in our head right and then we suddenly want him to be a cosmopolitan citizen but his 18 years of brain conditioning the brain networks do not respond that way so we have to also understand that uh, what we say detachment and it is not possible because our brain is embedded in the context of the life we are living at best we can channelize so these gaps these categories will always create differentiation you are fair you are black you are woman you are this you are that it it served a purpose for some people at some point of time but as we got more educated as we understand uh, in a more global way i think these ideas should be dropped of differences but i want to just challenge you a little bit there yes. because yeah, yeah, please, as you please. said earlier yourself that uh, the uh, tribal identity the need yep. to locate yourself in a group beyond your biological immediate biological yes. family yes that yes. we have established is a need that is something that is, we are hardwired for yeah yeah then the question arises and this is you yeah. know as you know this is a question that uh, on which there is a huge global debate just now yes that yes. was the liberal framing of the human as only requiring sufficient amount of education then uh, that person can overcome all forms of uh, tribal identity or uh, you know mm, mm, uh, in mm, india we call it caste and mm, uh, communal mm, identity mm, mm, uh, mm, mm. were we wrong is there something no. that is uh, in what ways are we not understanding uh, creatively our hard wiring that's my question right so I, okay let let carl jung answer this okay. i'll not answer this carl jung said he was talking about in the context of democracy mm. but we can extend this def, this uh, statement to a lot of other things he said democracy is an state of mitigated war so if there is no enemy at the border you can scale down the war to the minimal unit and that is an individual so this why the network of the brain which see all organs of the brain have to express even the those which cause rage they will look for an opportunity isn't it so the war will, if it is not happening on the front it is happening in the borders within the borders if it is not happening there it will happen in your town if it is not happening in the town at your home in your marriage if it is not happening in your marriage individually you will fight yourself no no but i i want to i seek a clarification here yes are yes, you then yes. implying that uh, to be human is to be embattled in to be some human fundamental way some, absolutely and to be human is to live in contradictions i will not call it a battle but brain has contradictions and the way we understand neuroscience rajni today is that larger part of the brain is unconscious conscious brain tends to know only what the unconscious brain is throwing at the conscious and the conscious brain is trying to make a story of it that is one way of understanding that brings in a question on whether people can decide whether they really have a free will in something or not so if you drop this whole idea of unconscious and conscious which for our thing i think what becomes very important is to i i'll tell you what people are missing liberal was not wrong but that is what they knew at that time everybody has missed out something very important that is what i think and they have missed out the process of the man called mahatma gandhi they have really missed out when we talk of gandhi we start talking about his politics his gram panchayat all that political work which he was doing but trust me some point of time we have to really go back and look at the man That's i right. have a more contextual reason for it yeah i want you to then first tell us how you found him because you I, were growing up yeah. in a communist setting uh, yeah. your own discipline would have easily kept you away from him how no, did you I, find I, gandhi no partly gandhi was in my blood because my maternal side they were 
my nana who used to be one of the comrades of mahatma gandhi and he actually died two days before gandhi died so we had this mention of gandhi every now and then and my maternal aunt and everybody had been to this satyagraha and all but i started studying gandhi because i was studying something else actually i suddenly realized that between 1850 to 1950 especially 1900 to 1950 there was no sphere of human endeavor which was left unturned quantum physics toppled newtonian world einstein did this thing but the greatest experiment we have forgotten non violence and violence were being played on the canvas of the world at the same time in two parallel streams mr adolf hitler was epitomizing violence systematic violence cold blooded violence no rage cold, even. no rage cold blooded systematic violence mahatma gandhi was systematizing non violence unka dawa hai he says there is a science of non violence yes that so that gandhi has answers so once i got this then i tried to answer only one single question why is gandhi doing or why was he doing what he was doing and that opened up a whole plethora of new dimension so that i can tell you systematically please do please do so he was thrown out of the train in peter maritzburg and he writes that that was my start of my active non violence in those four chapters with 9 to 13 in autobiography uh, he has if people don't have to read gandhi they should read this 9 to 13 chapter where he writes he was on the platform what was he thinking his choices are running away there is that and next thing he realizes that he has to take everybody together because people were again fighting and in blocks and all so that day gandhi some transformation happened something opened up epiphany that he realized that unless you unite people it's not going to work now take this people say lot of his detractors and who are happy in gandhi bashing they say ki gandhi actually never suffered violence he was keeping people at front and he was behind so i have to tell them those five incidents of south africa where gandhi would have died yeah yeah beaten black right. and blue beaten black and blue the next day in the carriage he was beaten black and blue he was hit, hit by that guard standing in front of president kugar's thing and when meer alam had beaten him up so what what i'm saying is that we tell these five incidents uh, at least take two or two three of them once so just take a step back what is that triggers forget the systematic and cold blooded violence what is in the head that triggers people to jump to rage or violence whether it's verbal or whatever the trigger in the brain is the sudden spike of insecurity or fear so the basic fear in deepest of thought in mind is what is the fear fear of extinction getting eliminated getting so the layer after layer of extinction is any hurt to self what fraud used to call ego that hurt immediately sends the mind into some tizzy as if something will happen even a word can do that and that brings in lot of this scales of violence so what was gandhi ji doing he meer alam hits him gandhi ji gets out of his coma or unconscious state first thing he does is where is meer alam he doesn't allow him to get arrested and all meer alam comes and offers an apology gandhi ji and rajni this one sentence defines this man he says my when you were hitting me my worry was not that uh, i will die or my worry was i should not hate you at that time i you know now now we know what contradictions are somebody is hitting you your mind is actually going into that fear 
and you are not bothered about that fear you are bothered that cognitively i should not hate this person right second incident is when he is walking with mili polak he suddenly jumps to the other side talks to somebody that man gives him something he comes back mili said what he says no no this man had taken a vow that he will kill me so where will he go finding me so he is here so why go he said what what did you bring he said he gave me the knife which he right and this is the this man story. oh really this, this is story. the this is the man who when he was 12 could not sleep with the lights off so fearful socially anxious the man faints in the court in first appearance and this is the man who is doing it in first four five years of arrival there the third story comes to india in champaran and all this has started some commissioner said that i'll kill that whatever he used a slang for gandhi so one day madhav desai has written this so one day madhav desai ji by the time he had become a secretary of gandhi so gandhi at 4:30 in the morning went out so madhav desai said where is he going he goes there so he goes to the commissioner's house rings the bell and said that you please you told yesterday people that uh, you will kill me whenever you see me after 7:30 or sometime i become very busy and a lot of people you will not be able to kill me so this is 4:30 nobody is seeing i mean commissioner could have killed him huh? please uh, that, that was british raj huh? there nothing would have stopped him and this man says what i see this as a quantum jump in the head jumping over the fear of death something what buddha did in his life after sacrificing his body now once gandhi ji was out of this fear then what remained he became a master of empathy and i think he never wrote it freud also did not write on gandhi but once you think objectively it is pretty possible that okay if you and me are one if i can take my empathy to a level where me and you are one if i can do a mistake you can also do it or if you do a mistake i can also do it that means there is no reason for me to get uh, uh, personal about it or create that divisive gap so if we both are same at this level of mistakes or any action whom am i going to hit am i going to hit you or when i am hitting you i am hitting myself also why the hell would i do violence on myself and uh, you know the fascinating thing is that as gandhi ji himself keeps repeating he is not the yes. first and he is not alone no no it because no. otherwise I, in fact if you think of tulsi ramayan yes when ram describes the chariot of righteousness yes what does he say at the end he says Uh, the true chariot of victory is this all of what yes. you have just described about yes. gandhi and yes. he who has that true chariot of victory yes. has no enemies yes. anywhere so whom is he going to conquer absolutely absolutely and why fact, why gandhi ji sorry yes. go ahead please no i'm saying why gandhi becomes very important is because of the science of this because he left a model which everybody can follow right that it is tough it is tough you have to really work on that thin interface in those millisecond seconds when the violence is arising positing it against the thought of non violence asserting your will so gandhi is an outlier who assert that there is free will if you decide absolutely so now the game is not over is, yeah sorry the game is not over Yes. Yeah. Yes. So this is a perfect I think juncture for us to now switch to the fascinating work you have been doing with school children. You yes. have a book out yes. called An yes. Hour with Gandhi. So can yeah. you uh, describe firstly how this thought came to you of you know right. uh, very yeah. uh, very few people do this you know to go out and carry some of these ideas to young people. and what yeah. happens when you are with these school children please please yeah. elaborate yeah. on that uh so rajni what happened is that uh, i i was doing lot of this workshops with the schools and teachers on various things and especially kids so there was always one struggle kids would not take sermons 
especially kids of these days they don't want uh, some dali wala coming and telling them some good things in life socrates said this and buddha who is interested <clears throat> so that was one struggle where i wanted to create some uh, life into the characters of what which i'm talking i was back from australia after one or two year of stint in 2008 so we suddenly one of my cousin said that let's do a program on gandhi so what i did i compiled gandhi's pictures and uh, took 300 400 of them in chronology i said let's try to so the first class which we did was class 3 and 4 students so it was a huge challenge to what to tell about gandhi to them so what i i just went i said let's roll gandhi right from uh, his porbandar house to his father and all but kids would not know terms as honesty and all the small kid wouldn't know so i put a sort of ploy in that i said ke abhi sharukh khan ke ghar ka naam malum hai do you know sharukh khan's house name everybody knew that and you asked uh, you know mr bachan's house they will say yes then i'll ask them ki what is the name plate outside your house they will tell the surnames you know the right aroras and divedi then all i said you tell me gandhi ji's house name so they said porbandar i said no porbandar was a family house where is gandhi ji's personal property none that was a shocker to them then you ask them whether gandhi ji was a successful man or unsuccessful as a barrister so everybody said abhi to we don't know he was a uh, moving like this so i said to go back he was earning so much money there and he left it all these things trigger them so now if i tell you the experience is smaller kids then you then you ask about some words associated with gandhi they all come up with sacrifice this that so on so i to i put them into a sort of narrative and the narrative was that this man was born to a mother who was very righteous and he learned few things from there he never used to tell lie even in the childhood after that uh, incident where he wrote a letter to karamchand gandhi then what came was next step was he goes to london he develops accountability persistence right and the habit of walking walking there then he comes back he is not successful as a lawyer and the ability back. to keep a promise ability to turn loss into opportunity this promise is so important accountability because mother was not there to watch out but he that's was still right. doing it that's right and then he goes back to africa on the ninth day he is thrown out he develops this whole non violence thing and he keeps experimenting day in and day out day in and day out so this 24 into 7 tweaking with gandhi did with his mind see we should be very careful about two things one that the gandhi we know is a gandhi post 50 years of his age till that time he was in a constant struggle especially with kasturba that's right especially each fall in rage was gandhi's lesson and a step to go up. so what i see is the mistake which has happened also in this country is we have made gandhi as a dry dry person who had no rasa in life we have to tell kids that he was a man full of life he was like us he had lust he had rage he had everything but everything went into his greater uh, thing of experiment of changing the mind of uniting people so then we come to south africa and all this experiment then he comes back to india where he has to really struggle doing all the he he could relate to everybody and why would people relate to him so i often tell people who a lot of youngsters come you must be also meeting them i don't like gandhi i said why and they would have read whatsapp i said you go back and read read gandhi you, you tell them what, what i said you forget the politics politics can be right wrong good bad and time will tell that but that is already done so you look at the process what is useful for you you please take it why are you rejecting the man but some of them will so as i grew in higher in the classes 6 7 8 9 10 then to philosophy people and to various the discourse the context change kept on changing 
but basic principles never change so to higher classes trust me i was talking to a philosophy department in one of the universities so this look at this this is a, man this is a lesson i also kept learning with each session between 6 7 to 12th they were really not interested in gandhi's principles the younger kids were these kids were interested ki why what did you do with bhagat singh what did you do with bos and this and kasturba so it was also a chance for me to correct history but higher level it boiled down to a point one day that i asked them okay let's again do that basic exercise of uh, so they said non violence this that whatever i said are these bad things is honesty a bad thing is non violence a bad thing is sacrifice a bad thing so when you can't say these are bad things why are you doing this that a man who had epitomized all this you were calling him bad i mean what is the schizophrenia in your head are you living in some imaginary world where you see this man and even his enemies agreed that he was very honest his life was a open book that discussion also brought in the third point which i wanted to emphasize and it came out there i am sharing it today after they had said no 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 the, all this are right and maybe we are thinking from other information what came out so the one person said that that means uh, gandhi knew all this i said gandhi after being thrown out from the train there was nothing unconscious in his life the way he dressed the way he talked everything he didn't have a tv and whatsapp so how would he communicate he would say i'd become like you he was conscious but once this man had decided that we are one all human race unfortunately this whole thing got caught in the freedom struggle so it became a sort of nationalist thing but it was a human thing then what do you do you re- reduce the gaps non violence can only come if you reduce the gaps and what are the gaps position material position that often is my car your car my son in harvard your son in some degree call it this thing he went on to disposition even sexuality for that matter any damn thing which can create gaps he kept on sacrificing but he also knew that yeah no no you finished your point no so I'm, i'm saying he also knew that people will do all these things people will live in relative truth they will never live in absolute truth so he never rejected people if you look through the whole history people had done given him gali they had uh, thrown bombs at him they had thrown chappals at him noah khali did the worst thing putting nails and glasses splinters when was that that gandhi rejected somebody i still have to find somebody absolutely so he, No, he knew that relative was, truth yes sorry sorry complete what you're saying no no i'm saying so all this can be practiced if we consciously take a decision then there is a possibility that our mind would actually alter the wiring of the brain that is the time when gandhi also knew one thing rajni there is no point fighting violence and rage and lust and all you just bloody ignore it that's how we treat these days so i brought all this thing into my medical practice also i see before, less patient before yes. we go there before we move yes. to your medical practice i just still yes. want to ask that uh, when you describe all the many things that gandhi was able to distance himself from or detach yes. or sacrifice yes. how do the young people relate to it because that actually is one of the challenges yes. that Uh, if we look at gandhi ji's life in the broad uh, you know just in the headline news kind of manner yes. then a lot of it seems impossible for ordinary people to follow it is, it is. so how do you how do you deal with this issue in your hour with gandhi so, sessions i'm i'm also very fortunate to talking this after gopal ji talk gopal ji had described one word for him i i used to question this, whether he is impossible is not impossible because he himself has been there so if it had been impossible he would not have been there right yeah, yeah. okay inconvenient this is gopal ji's word inconvenient and this is very inconvenient trust me because of this reason 24 into 7 keep aware of whatever you are doing 
and keep positing your own decided uh, asymptote that you put that asymptote your vector into everything right from panchayat raj to international issues to but we devised a small ploys one was even before the swachh bharat came we were telling kids one of my cousin also used to go we he is a cleanliness freak and that is why he is totally incapable of doing anything because uh, you can't clean dirty by nature stuff happens you know up and all that so we said we told kids they okay do one thing do a thing in your school said that no trash should touch the ground right to gandhi comes in second i told them that have you ever been to the house of your maid and driver they are suddenly shocked they never been as you go have a meal at their home then you see what you are doing then maybe you can kids did it they did it some schools send these kids into the slums next door right all those kids some of them are grown up now they are but they really come back see my issue was very simple i don't want to make gandhi out of them don't be gandhi you be yourself right also what appeals to kid that we are a resource uh, i mean resource crunched world so if we don't share either we perish together or we sustain so when kids go back home it is the parents who don't listen actually my gosh one girl in bihar one nitish kumar ji had organized one gandhi samagam something one ordinary middle class girl asked me sir whatever you all are saying is very important but we go back we will get into direct confrontation with parents they will say that oh why are you doing this and why are you getting into all this you study get your career but kids change i think that is the only hope we should go back and teach kids for 17 18 years let them do artificial intelligence let them do all that stuff but we sh- and and this small sacrifices you see our childhood we were sharing clothes and shoes with our cousins weren't we today nobody does it i mean it is all within the home so violence is actually starting at home i'm telling you still it is starting on the heads we extend it into it may not appear so but there is a simmering volcano which is going on that alternative has to be provided by training from childhood then we can expect after 20 years right so you were going to tell me about your professional practice how you yeah, carry yeah. these learnings yes. uh, there yes. and what is the struggle that you're finding there on non right. right. on with so, non violence so uh, see we have if any psychiatrist would agree i there are only 10 15% of people who have biological illnesses like schizophrenia obsessive compulsive autism and all that is fine we treat them with whatever mechanisms we have 80% people i still feel are people with problems of living social suffering as pressures increase they are not able to handle that pressure that creates symptoms like anxiety depression so obviously they sometimes require a small help of medication but then i love to talk without sort of formal psychotherapy because that normally doesn't work so i take them to the basics even if it means pulling the carpet from under their feet bring them to basic questions so i incorporated lot of thing i incorporated buddha i incorporated krishna i and i somehow rajni it happens like good things happen i said okay when and you know i have this lot of youngsters because associated with iit also uh, so there are five lakh kids spread who have been spoiled by me i don't wow. know what they're doing over there. how many so, years you would have touched these over 20, lives? 20 years 20 years so they still keep in touch and they get whatever good bad whatever they are doing but they're doing something i mean this is a good thing even if there is a disabled person somehow they are if i am being able to push them into some work at least so they have their capacity but their capacity should allow them to self actualize so that somehow happens so these kids who are more intelligent will come and discuss okay somebody will say okay tell me i don't want this whole thing i agree tell me what is the way 
in nutshell. It took me some time. It took me 10 years to devise this nutshell. So I said, okay, I'll tell you broad nutshell. So there are three ways of living. He said, what? I said, either you be like Krishna, that I'm here. I, each moment will bring me something. I'll give my best response according to my brain, not the ideal response, but the best response. Or be like Buddha that I'll detach myself from everything. I'll just watch. Or be like Gandhi that here I am with my all non-violence and my empathy and I love everybody. You are free to relate to me whichever way you want. I am not moving. Find out. Find out your trajectory. Whatever suits your nature. I said all three of them Krishna is difficult to follow because we don't know his process. And you will say he's a god. You talk of Buddha, you will say it's mythology. But Buddha also left some processes. Gandhi has left everything written. And if he has missed out something... I'm saying either he has written or other people have written. Other people. So what he has missed out? Millions of books and articles. Somebody, somebody has written. So you know the process. You just walk step by step. Every day at your home and in your life, work, work out. So some people try it, they are able to do it better. They wouldn't say Gandhi for whatever reasons they believe, but they have caught the process that you have to work on your brain with a conscious decision. So the only simple thing which Rajni people can do, which all of us fail in doing all the time, but okay, if you are able to do 70-80%, it's all right. That while you are reacting. Your self is coming in contact with the other. Be it one person or a nation or whatever. Expand it. Do you have alternatives to express yourself? If you have, then find out which is the best alternative which will keep both the parties intact with their dignity. Because... Sorry, Alok, can yeah. you elaborate what you mean by alternative? Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm saying... This. So, while, like, take violence and non-violence. Again from Gandhi, he said violence... By violence, you can win. You can decimate the something which is opposing you. But with, by killing the bad thing, you have also killed a lot of good things in them. Because no bad man is a perfect bad man. That bad man would be good to somebody at least. So you have taken off some goodness also by relative percentage. So if you keep doing this, an eye for an eye in a larger context, if you keep doing this for removing some, say, X amount of uh, goodness, uh, badness, you are also removing some Y amount of goodness. So you calculate at the end of who can calculate all this. So uh, by alternatives, I mean that, say, I, if I have to, my driver bumps a car, he did so actually, in fact. And I've been brought up in Kanpur, so that amount of rage is, isn't with me. It has taken some 50 years for me to, the 80% I'm able to do it, 20%. So he came, he's a new car, huh? he said, yeah, abhi car to dent ho gaya. So I went down in the apartment, saw it. In good old days, when I was untrained, it would have been a huge outburst. But you know what came out of my mind? I, I'm, I'm no greatness. I'm just telling you the way it happened. Maybe it's this Gandhi's thing. I said, boss, how did you do it? How did you do it? You know, like, how, 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 how did he bang the car, you mean? How did, we, huh? how did you do it? Yeah, there's a lot of space. And then the next thought which came, he said, yeah, I could have happened with me. So I can't do much. So I said, Jao, you keep working, don't worry. I'll do it. So this whole idea that if the person has spilled a glass of water on you, you can also spill. If somebody can break something, you can also do it. So if the, again, I, so this is the basic nutshell which I have devised, derived, is that Gandhi probably was doing this all the time. All the time. Like what Gopalji said in his talk yesterday, uh, two days back, when he was telling his granddaughter, granddaughter 
But what would have Gandhi said? He said, hey, please don't do it to anybody else. So what I'm saying, these are all, the problem is that uh, when we start telling adults all this, they have so much of, uh, I call it intellectual garbage. And they have not processed that. Unprocessed intellectual garbage, they start thinking from top down. So whatever you're telling them is already feeding their preconceived. Kids are not that. It's like you have to build up a Gandhi or a Buddha or Christ or Muhammad Sahib or anybody for that matter by what do, going bottom up. So when you are training the brain networks, you might as well train them in becoming a better human being. Forget whether they are engineers or doctors or politicians. What is the point of hitting? I mean, it's funny. It's funny because... So the ad, I will extend this. What is happening now in this country or any country for that matter? People, because they don't want to... I, I said a word called pain of knowledge. This is not a painless thing. Gandhi would have undergone huge personal anguish. No less than Buddha. We are not ready to take that. That's why we don't want to process our ideas. So it is easy for some people to give an external framework of divisiveness. The thorns of which go into the gaps of the society and just expand them. That answers the first question which I said, why, why the same people live together? Because they want to live together. They want to love. What are, what are the barricades? Barricades are external. Nobody wants, who wants it? But then money, power, all this stuff, you know. That becomes a sort of a, people don't want to break that traditional framework of thought. And it's not even traditional. They wouldn't go back to Vedas and Upanishads. They will go back to 400 years. And 400 years will say all this nonsense. They tend to believe it. You ask them what is the problem? One to one, Rajni, trust me. I am confessing this to you. I have never confessed it to anybody. In my clinic, I treat whether it's Hindu or Muslim with equal bashing. If they tell me that uh, all this old things. I take these people back to, I said, get to the essence of it. Even if you are, you are worshipping God, even have you imbibed anything out of Lord Rama? Have you done one act which is uh, like Hanuman? Have you done any, anything which Krishna did? Or same with uh, Muslim people. One to one, Rajni, I can tell you all of them will agree to what we are talking about. Right? Together they become like me, you, that Kabila tribe comes in. So that's it. That is it. But anyway, we should keep trying and changing people. Some, some people will change. Thank you so much. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, Rajniji. Wonderful. Bless you.